If a professor asked you to create a slideshow or infographic presentation with images or photos, where would you go to get them? Most of you probably thought, I'll just go to Google. Okay, don't get me wrong, Google is great. But you have to be careful because most of the images Google will give you are copyrighted. So what is copyright? Copyright simply means that certain pieces of intellectual property are owned by someone and in order to reuse them for your own projects, you must get their consent. And if you don't, you could get into some serious trouble. The last thing you want is to receive a cease and desist letter because you used a picture of someone famous or a musician's song in your presentation. To find images you can use without getting in trouble, you should go to Openverse instead. Openverse is a database of media that is available for reuse. Everything within it is protected by something called a Creative Commons license. Creative Commons is kind of like copyright, but less restrictive. Most of the image with a Creative Commons license simply ask you to cite the image. We'll talk more about that later. Searching in Openverse is a little different than searching for articles or books in the UB Library website. Instead, you have to think a bit larger. If your project is about how stress impacts the mental health of college students, focus on your main keywords. Since your research question involves college students, that would be a great thing to search for. It's a blanket term. However, you may want to choose images that would convey stress instead of smiles, so always remember context. Words like stress and mental health might not give you the results you're looking for. Both of the images here are in Openverse under those keywords and don't make any sense with the research question. Remember to think broadly. When in Openverse, search your keyword in the search bar. On the right side are the filters. Use commercially has the strictest rules for reuse and if checked, it means you can use the image in any case, even if you want to make money off the project. Additionally, there is the modify or adapt filter which means you can manipulate any of the images that come up. After I click on both of those filters, I have a lot of stuff to choose from, including sound files. Within the first page of results, I can see two images that would work for my research topic. After I click on the first one I highlighted, it will open up a new page. When I scroll down a bit, there's a button that says, get this image. Click on that, and it will take you to where the image lives. This image is hosted or published on Flickr, which is a database of photographers' work. On this page, you should identify the following things. The author or photographer, the Creative Commons license, the date it was uploaded or publication date, and the link where you can download the image. Before you download it, click on the Creative Commons license link. The information here shows you what the requirements are if you decide to use this image in your project. First off, it is free to use in any form, including adapting or changing it in any way, as long as you give credit. This means that you provide a citation for the original image. We'll come back to this momentarily. Next, go back to the main page for Flickr and download it by clicking on the download arrow. It will open up a box that asks what size of image you wish to download. Always download the largest size you can, because larger images are easier to resize than smaller ones. Once you download it, go back to the Openverse page for one last step. Scroll down to where you see Credit the Creator. Then. Click Copy Text. This will copy something called a three-point attribution, which is like an in-text citation for an image. Next, upload the image and place it on your project. Then paste the three-point attribution you copied from Openverse underneath. This provides the title of the image with a link back to the image itself, the photographer's name with a link back to their page, and the Creative Commons license. Now you have given credit where credit is due. The last step is to make your three-point attribution small, so that it doesn't draw too much attention. Whoever is looking at your project would rather be drawn to information and images, which is much more important. If you have any other questions, visit our research guides about the MLA and APA guidelines or contact a librarian. Take care and have a good one.